Okay, now we will talk about the effect of drugs on the frog's heart. Now for this, we have selected three drugs. One is adrenaline. One is adrenaline. Next is acetylcholine. Okay, next is acetylcholine. And third drug is your atropine. Okay, the third drug is atropine. Adrenaline will take in the ratio of 1 is to 10,000. Acetylcholine will take in the ratio of 1 is to 1 lakh. And atropine we take as 0.5% solution. Okay. So that is the strength of the solutions that we will take. Now how it is done. Okay. Now like that, that of a temperature. Okay. So this is with the isotonic paper, the recording. This is with the time starting. I will show you both. Okay. So first we will take the recording with your the normal cardiogram recording. Okay. We take the normal cardiogram recording. After we take the normal cardiogram recording, we give two drops of adrenaline over the frog's heart. And we wait for 5 to 10 minutes so that the effect can be achieved. Okay. Now, after 10 minutes, we again record the heart recording. Okay, we record the heart recording. This is with adrenaline. Okay. This is the normal cardiogram. Okay. Now, after we have recorded the recording with adrenaline, we wait for some time. Then we pour normal ringer solution over the frog's heart and we wait till the heart starts beating at its normal pulse and next we give your acetylcholine. Now after we give two drops of acetylcholine and again we wait for your five minutes so that the effect of acetylcholine can be achieved. Now after five minutes again we take a recording. So this is again the normal recording. We take a normal recording in between. Okay, when the frog's heart comes back to normal. So we take a normal recording. And then we will take a recording of acetyl. Now, after recording the effect of acetylcholine for two to three days, then we pour two drops of atropine. Now, as soon as we pour atropine, we get a change in the cardiogram and we take again in that recording. So after giving acetylcholine, we directly give atropine and we take its effect. Now you see what are the effects. First we come to adrenaline. Now for the adrenaline if you see, you see both the pores as well as the heart rate is increasing in case of adrenaline. Okay. Now if you come to acetylcholine, you will find that what is happening, the Heart rate is decreasing as well as the force of contraction is also decreasing. But if you give atropine directly after giving acetylcholine, we find that more or less it is similar to the normal cardiogram. There is a slight increase in the force of contraction and slight increase in the heart rate. But suppose you take a normal cardiogram, suppose you take a normal cardiogram and then 
you give the effect of n coupling, you will find that there is big increase in the force as well as the R2. Now we will discuss why each effect is occurring. Okay. Now first we will talk about why the effect of adrenaline. Now adrenaline has a beta 2 adrenergic receptor on the on the frog's heart. Okay. So what happens when the adrenaline, adrenaline acts on its beta 2 receptors? When it acts on the beta 2 receptors, it causes an increase in the cyclic gain. Okay? So if there is an increase in the cyclic AMP, then the long-standing calcium channels they open. Okay? So if the long-standing calcium channels open up, there is increased depolarization. So that increased depolarization will increase the rate of heart. Okay, to increase the heart rate. Now, moreover, in the heart, there is another receptor, adrenergic receptor called beta-1 adrenergic receptor. Now, adrenaline will work on this beta-1 adrenergic receptor and it will cause an increase in the intracellular calcium. So, if the intracellular calcium increases, obviously the force of contraction will increase. Okay. So, you see adrenergic by acting on beta 2 will increase the heart rate and by acting on beta 1 will increase the force of contraction. Okay. So, that is the effect of adrenaline. Now, coming to acetylcholine. Now you know the acetylcholine has two types of receptor. One is the nicotinic receptor and other is the muscarinic receptor. Now the receptor which is present in the heart is the muscarinic receptor. And it is basically N2 type of muscarinic receptor. Now acetylcholine what it does, it causes an activation of this N2 receptors. Now these N2 receptors are nothing but they are potassium channels. So what happens whenever acetylcholine will act, it will cause the opening of the potassium channels. So if the potassium channels open up, what will happen? The cell will become hyperpolarized. So if the cell becomes hyperpolarized, what will happen? The, it will be very difficult to initiate the pacemaker potential as a result what will happen the heart rate will decrease okay moreover this acetylcholine decreases cyclic AMP okay so once it decreases cyclic AMP intracellular calcium channels also decreases okay opening of intracellular calcium channels decreases so the amount of calcium inside the cell decreases. As a result, the force of contraction also decreases. Okay, so that is the effect of acetylcholine. It decreases both the heart rate as well as force of contraction. Now you see I told you, if you give atropine directly after giving acetylcholine, the cardiogram comes more or less back to its normal, like a normal cardiogram. Now, why is it so? Atropine is actually a acetylcholine blocker. Okay? So, as soon as you give atropine, it will go and bind with the acetylcholine receptors. So, if it goes and binds with acetylcholine receptors, what will happen? The effect of acetylcholine will be abolished and the heart will start now beating at the normal pace. Okay. Now you see here I told you if you give atropine without giving any other drug you find there is increase in the force as well as the heart rate. Now why is that so? That is because this atropine it is seen that it causes the activation of cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase. Okay. It causes that the cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase actually causes inhibition of cyclic AMP. So if atropine inhibits your phosphodiesterase, that means the acetylcholine concentration
circulation in the heart is kept normal or it is increased because it cannot be degraded. Otherwise, after some time of formation of cyclic AMP, it is degraded by phosphodiesterase. Now, because phosphodiesterase is inhibited by atropine, this cyclic AMP is increased in the cell. The further increase in the cell, the calcium channels are open and the force of contraction increases. Therefore, the effect of atropine single will increase the force of contraction and rate of increase in the heart rate. Here you have to remember that you never give atropine before giving acetylcholine because if you give atropine before giving acetylcholine, atropine will block all the acetylcholine receptor. Therefore, the effect of acetylcholine will not be performed. Okay, so that is what you have to remember. Now, this is your cardiogram for the effect of drugs. Okay, so this part is the normal cardiogram reading. Here you see, as we have given where it is written adrenaline, you see as soon as adrenaline was given, both the heart rate as well as the force of contraction is increasing. Then we have taken a normal cardiogram reading. Next, we have taken an acetylcholine reading. This part is the acetylcholine reading. You see both the force of contraction as well as the heart rate is, you see the heart rate is decreasing. Then this is the normal cardiogram reading. And we take a, after giving acetylcholine, we take a atropine reading where we find that it is more or less similar to the normal cardiogram. There is a, only a slight increase in the heart rate. If you see, after giving atropine, if you give acetylcholine, we find that there is no change in the cardiogram. The no change in the cardiogram is because the atropine has already blocked all the receptors for acetylcholine. Okay. So, this is the cardiogram. If this cardiogram is given, you have to say this is a cardiogram showing the effect of drugs on the frog's heart. Thank you.